just bought a bright and shiny new Mac. You open it up, turn it on, and you start to use it. But now what? How can we make this even better? Well, with accessories. I've used a ton of different Mac models over the last few years, and because of that, I've also accumulated quite a few accessories that I love, and some that I left sitting in the drawer somewhere in the office, taking up space. So let's talk about them. Macs, and MacBooks specifically, usually come with very limited port selection. And if you wanna plug something in, you gotta get some sort of USB-C adapter to plug it in. That's where USB-C hubs and docks are super helpful because they can give you whatever port that you need. But there are some wonky hubs and docks out there. Here are some of my favorites that are catered specifically for each different Mac model. If you have a Mac mini or Mac studio with Apple Silicon, you know that all the ports or most of the ports are on the back. But with this Satechi dock, it sits right underneath your Mac without taking away from the look of your Mac. So now you have quick, easy access to all the ports that you might possibly need. And moving on to the iMac, it can be purchased in many colors. So it can be hard finding accessories that match a given model. But there is one hub that could match all the different models. This hyper USB-C hub clamps to the front of your iMac and comes with a bunch of different colored plates that you can swap out to fit the exact aesthetic of your iMac. But if you don't want something sticking out on the front of your iMac and you like to maintain that clean aesthetic, there's also these USB-C hubs that sit underneath the base of the iMac so it doesn't take away from the iMac look. And these blend seamlessly into the stand of the iMac. But I will say, I couldn't find a pink or purple version, so don't expect a match there. I tried. For MacBooks, if you search on Amazon, there are so many different hubs offered, and most of them are pretty good or will serve your needs. But things I'd look out for in a hub when I'm searching for hubs is the speed of the USB-C or USB-A ports, if the hub supports charging through the USB-C port, and does it have any of the other ports that I might need, like an SD card reader, Ethernet, 4K 60 frames per second HDMI, or even DisplayPort. I got this Basius, Basus one that suits my needs pretty well. Most of these hubs just dangle off of your Mac, but there are ones that take up the two ports on your MacBook, but those also limit you to only using those on your MacBook, while these dangly ones could be used with any laptop or even iPads with USB Type-C. Okay, let's just say you want something super high-end for your MacBook. That's when today's sponsor, iVanki, has got you covered. The iVanki Fusion Dock Max 1 is the first and only docking station made exclusively for Apple Silicon Macs that support a quad display MacBook setup on Macs with M1 Macs, M2 Macs, and M3 Max chips. It uses dual Thunderbolt 4 chips and the two ports on your MacBook to access the Fusion Dock suite of ports. It has 20 different ports. Yeah, 20 ports. That includes 10 gigabit USB Type-C, 10 gigabit USB-A ports, and an SD card, micro SD card reader, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, and even a 3.5 audio jack and optical audio port. That's a lot of ports that cover a broad range of inputs. If you're like me, when you sit down at your desk with your MacBook, you have a bunch of different accessories that you have to plug in, cluttering your desk, and making a huge mess and less usable desk space. With the Fusion Dock Max 1 and all of its different ports, you can just plug all your accessories and displays directly to the Fusion Dock, and then you'll only need to plug in the dual Thunderbolt cable to your MacBook for full access to all those different accessories, decluttering your desk and simplifying your desk setup. I really like that the Fusion Dock Max 1 has all the ports I could possibly need, so I can just plug right in and begin ingesting my video footage through external drives or SD cards, and then connect to my NAS to begin video editing. No more finding all five different cables that I need to plug into my laptop. So if you're interested in the iVanki Fusion Dock Max 1, check out the link in the video description below. And thanks again to iVanki for sponsoring this portion of the video. When you purchase a MacBook off Apple's website, you're given the option to select a more powerful wattage charging brick that will charge your laptop faster. I recommend against this because these power bricks are just standard USB-C power bricks that are, to be honest, big and chunky. You can instead go to Amazon and purchase a GAN charger for your Mac. These GAN chargers support more power and more ports in a more compact package. This way, you can charge your laptop and even other accessories like your phone, iPad, Switch, power bank, whatever, off a single power brick and have that power brick that came with your laptop as a backup power brick. Super convenient for traveling and just daily usage because it takes up less space on your power strip compared to Apple's included bricks. For a lot of people, their laptop is their only computer and they plug it directly into monitors at home to use as a desktop. When plugged in, I like to close my laptop, put it aside and use the monitors, 
keyboard, mice, speakers, and other accessories that I have at that desk. But you probably don't want your laptop just sitting there awkwardly taking up space. That's where laptop stands come in handy. This keeps your laptop standing up so it takes up less desk space, while at the same time, looks good in the process. There's a lot of different types of stands that come in different colors and styles out there, and they all kind of serve the same purpose. So pick what you best considering its style and cost for you. But I will say though, if you're using any Mac that's not fanless, make sure that the stand you pick allows for adequate airflow from your Mac's vents, which is usually where the hinge on the laptop is. Some stands block this and it can cause your laptop to heat up faster and will potentially damage your laptop faster, right? Also, the most accessible Apple laptops, the MacBooks with the M chips with no Pro or Max designation, only support having one monitor plugged into them at a time. So you could use something like this Nuxlaxi laptop stand, which lets you elevate your laptop to any angle that you want. That way you're not straining your neck downward to look at the laptop and it's always at eye level whenever you need it to be. It can also turn your laptop into a good secondary display and in this position, you can still make use of its speakers and webcam. The only downsides I see with this new Laxi stand is that it requires a decent amount of force to change its position which is also a good thing because you don't want it just adjusting randomly and tossing your laptop to the ground because it tipped over. And the base of the stand is pretty big, but that's also probably for balance reasons. All right, let's put this thing away. It's actually quite heavy. When it comes to mice, my favorite Mac mouse has got to be the Magic Mouse. Just kidding, that was just to see if you were still paying attention. The standard Apple Magic Mouse is a pain to pair with non-Apple devices and charges through lightning when most things in Apple's lineup has now switched over to USB Type-C. Personally, I wouldn't recommend it. For a long time, I've been a fan of the Logitech MX series of mice. So this is the MX Master 3S and the MX Anywhere 3S. The MX Master 3S is a full-size mouse that lets you switch between three different devices so that you can pair it with your Mac, iPad, and any other computer or device that you own. It comes with up and down scroll and sideways scroll wheels and even a customizable button on the thumb rest. But sadly, because of that, it's not made for left-handed people and there's no left handed variant. The Anywhere 3S is like a miniature version of it with the same great switching feature, free scrolling wheel, and quiet clicks, but doesn't have the extra thumb button or side scroll wheel. They both come in a bunch of different colors, and there's even a Mac version. But honestly, I recommend the standard version of the MX Master because it comes with a dongle that lets you use it on non-Bluetooth devices or for stronger connection with devices with USB type A. The Mac version doesn't come with that. Beyond that, there's no other differences other than the cable that comes with it for charging with the standard Windows version being USB Type-C to Type-A and the Mac version being C to C. For keyboards, I have the same complaints as I do for Apple's mice. It's pain to pair with non-Apple devices and charges through lightning. If you're looking for a good keyboard, I'd recommend one of these three different keyboards. The MX Keys, if you want a simple but great productivity keyboard. The MX Mechanical, if you want something mechanical with productivity features. And the Keychron Q1 Pro, if you want something that's easy to quickly use, but has a lot of customizability if you're interested in custom keyboards. All these keyboards are wireless backlit keyboards with a USB-C port for charging, support for macOS and Windows key layouts, and can pair up to three different devices each. These are all great productivity keyboards, but the higher you go in the price bracket, the more customizability and unique feel you get out of your keyboard. So I hope that helped you figure out what kind of keyboard you personally would want. The two Logitech keyboards that I mentioned come in regular and Mac variants, but again, in this case, I'd still recommend the regular version because the keyboard layout is good for both Windows and Mac. When you use it with the Windows machine, it uses that layout, and when you use it with the Mac, it picks up that layout. The Mac one is made only for Mac, and some keys are out of place when used with the Windows machine. When you purchase your Mac, you probably noticed how much upgrading the SSD storage cost. It's ridiculously expensive, but fast storage is actually quite cheap if you don't mind having to plug it in to access it, like the Samsung T9 SSD. I have the older version, the T7, right here in front of me, but they functionally do the same thing, but with the T9 being significantly faster. They're fast external SSDs that I can use to store anything I don't need on my Mac, back up important files, and even edit YouTube videos off of. They're nice to have if you need extra space because you didn't pick a Mac with more storage 
or didn't want to pay those ridiculous prices for the storage. If you own a Mac, there's a pretty good chance that you also own an iPhone. And if you do, you can use your iPhone as a webcam for your MacBook using continuity camera. This feature lets you select your iPhone as a webcam wirelessly or wired so that you can charge your phone while it's being used as a webcam. The function works pretty well and the image sure beats most webcams that I've seen. It doesn't beat using a dedicated mirrorless camera as a webcam, but that also requires a lot more setup, configuring, and cost. Most people won't be doing that. If you're trying to use continuity camera with your iPhone, you just wanna make sure that you have the MagSafe mount for it. That way it can be properly propped up on your laptop. I mentioned a lot of great recommendations so far, but what about anti-recommendations? If I were to not recommend any items, it would be accessories that sit between your MacBook's keyboard and the screen, like webcam covers, trackpad covers, or keyboard covers. While protecting your privacy and your computer are very important things, MacBooks are made with very small gaps between the keyboard and screen, and placing anything between them can cause damage to the keyboard or display. There's even an Apple support article about this very topic. It's not a great idea, but if you have an iMac or separate standalone Magic Keyboard, feel free to use a webcam cover or keyboard cover. Personally though, I think keyboard covers make keyboards feel more mushy, ruining the typing experience. But for some people, it may be more important to make sure that your devices are safe rather than overall typing experience. Okay, so those are all the accessories that I've had experiences over the last few years. They've made my experience using a Mac better, and I hope they do the same for you. It's tough out there looking for accessories when there seems to be limitless options on the internet. Anyway, what do you personally think though? Did this help you find the right accessories for you? What are you using that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you all next time. Bye.